Welcome to the Magenta Otter Travels language series, They Don't Speak American in Britain. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. We would love to have you part of the Magenta Otter Travels community. All right, today's installment is eight words not to say if you're an American traveling in the UK. In my 20 plus times visiting the UK, I've learned a few terms that are just easier to avoid saying to not cause confusion. So the first one is pants. This one really is the biggest one because it's just a word we use so often in the US to describe clothing we wear on the lower half of our body. But in the UK, pants just means underwear. So if you're a very ladylike person and you say, I don't like to wear pants, I only like wearing skirts and dresses, that sounds kind of alarming in the UK. So just remember, pants means underwear. So when you go to call slacks, trousers, jeans, chinos, corduroys, pants, you might want to just use a more specific term instead. The next word is bum. Now, if you are referring to your bottom or the thing you sit on, you can say bum. Just don't use bum referring to a homeless person. I mean, I don't really think you should be referring to homeless people as bums anyway, but just know that if you say the word bum in the UK, it only means a bottom. Which brings us to our next word that you just really should avoid saying altogether, and that is fanny. Because in the UK, fanny does not mean the same thing as it does in the US. In the US, it's your bum, it's your bottom, what you sit on. And in the UK, fanny is a female's private parts, let's just say, on this family-friendly show. So if you are wearing a fanny pack, which unfortunately has come back in style, don't call it a fanny pack in the UK. Call it a bum bag, if you would, because that's what they call it in Britain. So the next word is actually two words that I would just avoid saying, not because they're really bad, but just because they're confusing and it's easier to not say them. And that is if you are in public at a restaurant or anywhere shopping wherever and you want to know where the restroom is, don't say where's the restroom because they won't know what you're talking about. And don't say the bathroom either because in Britain that's very literally meant a room with a bath in it. So if you're in a restaurant and you want to go use the restroom, it's not going to have a bathtub in it. Therefore, you should say, can you tell me where the ladies room is or the gents or the toilet. I really find it safest when traveling in Europe in general to just ask where the toilet is. It takes a little getting used to because in the US we kind of feel like toilet is a crass word to say, just kind of very blunt and descriptive, but it really is the most clear thing to say because it's a somewhat universal word. It's similar to the word in French and just in general people will know what you're talking about if you ask, can you show me where the toilet is? Um, if you're also in someone's home, you can see, say, where's the loo? Loo is kind of a more um, slang or common term used. But if you're in a nice restaurant, I probably wouldn't ask, where's the loo? I would probably say, where's the ladies' room? Or even, where's the toilet? Okay, enough bathroom talk. The next word that I would probably just avoid saying might surprise you, it's the word soccer. So in Britain, what we call soccer here in the US is called football. Similar to pretty much everywhere else in the world, um, soccer is really a term that's unique to the US. And what's funny is that the Brits take their football very seriously. So if an ugly American comes over there talking about soccer, it might just get their hackles up a bit. So I'd say when in Rome, when in London, just call it football. And then when they come over here to visit the US and they wanna talk about football, you can correct them. If they're talking about soccer, you can tell them they need to call it soccer. And if they're talking about American football, then they can say football. Um, the next word is kind of a funny one, but because we are animal lovers, we have come across this many times. And it's the word pet. So 
are there it is also old-fashioned terms for intimate contact so in the UK if you are say at an otter sanctuary and you see an adorable little otter and you say oh that otter is so cute may I pet him they think you are strange instead they would expect you to say may I stroke him if someone's walking their dog down the street and you want to pet the dog you say may I stroke your dog so it sounds very odd to us because that's not how we use the word stroke but that is what is common and expected there next word is also a little bit uncomfortable it's the word period now here in the US period can mean menstruation it can also mean that dot at the end of a sentence in the UK it's not a dot at the end of the sentence it's only menstruating so if you want to say something with emphasis and say otters are the cutest animals anywhere period that just sounds really strange to them instead you would say otters are the cutest animal in the world full stop because the dot at the end of a sentence in the UK is referred to as a full stop okay this next one might seem a bit strange but it's the word England it's not that you shouldn't say the word England you absolutely should if you are referring to the country of England the problem is that sometimes as Americans we consider all of the UK or all of Britain as England and that can be annoying to people so if someone came over from Europe and they were visiting you in Texas and they talked about Texas as if it was a part of California you would be like what no Texas and California are two completely different places and it's all part of the United States and so it's the same thing there um, don't act like someone who is from Edinburgh Scotland is in England don't say where in England do you live if you know someone is British you should really find out what country they're from and make sure you refer to England as England and Scotland as Scotland and Wales as Wales and Northern Ireland as Ireland so just to keep those straight so a little bit of a geography lesson the UK is England Scotland Wales and Northern Ireland and Great Britain is the island of England Scotland and Wales and just know Scotland and Wales are two amazing countries with their own great food and scenery and language and culture so get to know them as their own unique countries all right well I hope you've enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching and do something good in the world today